All right, going into game number two. And at the bottom left is the blue Protoss. We will have Lancer X. At the top left, as the Peach uh, Terran, we will have Bounded, a.k.a. Okay. Kiriji. So, you pull off something like that in the first game, right? And it works. Now, what do you think that Lancer X is going to be a little bit paranoid, like scouting a lot, looking for things, or maybe even starting with a build that is really safe? Um, I think... I think he will. But I'm just trying to think about possible proxy locations on Medusa. I don't think there's that many, because a lot of the middle isn't buildable. Yeah. Uh, let me have a look at the map here. I mean... There's, like, no super obvious proxy locations. But having said that, on Fighting Spirit, you just kind of put it in a random place in the middle, like the factory. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it could definitely, definitely do something similar. I guess we'll see. Oh man, he, I mean, could do, he could do a factory float into the back, that'd be awesome. Yeah, but the problem with the float, I think, is that uh, usually by the time you're trying to do that, you're either already in a good position or not. I mean, it can do something if the game is extremely passive, but if it's not... I mean, it's kind of real risky, because if it gets spotted, then you really are in a bad position. So it's a really a coin flip, I think. Yeah, yeah. I like I like more the kind of like the hidden factory because there is less chance that it will actually get spotted. That is uh, an excellent point. Well, we are going to have a wall in, which uh, sometimes indicates shenanigans, but on Medusa, because you have no ramp to defend or anything like that, doing a wall like this isn't terrible. I think it's completely I, fine. That's one of the things that I always wondered about because we've seen in the, like, the, this new age style, like putting the dep depot next to the barracks so that you have a very small gap to, you know, through the marine, but the zealot can get through. Yeah. And interestingly enough, I, th I if I remember correctly, one of the reasons that people started to do that is because of the dragoons, like with range being a little bit annoying on your wall. And I would think that in a map where there is no ramp, that's actually even worse because it's a lot easier for the dragons to kind of move around. You'd be correct. Uh, 1015 gate, for example, extremely strong on this map. Uh, in particular, if there's a wall in like this. Oh man, this probe doing some nice damage. He forced this other SCV off, and now he's doing some serious damage on this one. If it swings to the right side, he's going to die. Oh! Oh, he fixed it. He knew. Well, I told you, he can get mad. <laughs> Even the probe. Oh god. Well... I guess we'll still have to see normal builds coming out so far in each of the bases. I mean, we could even just see an in-base two-fact here from uh, from Bounded, since he's got this perfect wall off. Um, there is one g guy on gas, though, so okay. most, likely, most likely an expansion. Yeah. Although, as we saw last game, you know, you can kind of change it later on, so... Yeah, you're absolutely right. And there's uh, not going to be any 1015 cheese coming out from Lancer X, so I guess we'll oh. see... What he does. He's not even actually going for an aggressive uh, second gateway. You can actually go two gateway goon without doing 1015 and just, you know, power goon it up. But he's not doing that either, even though I, I really like that build on this map, just to put on the pressure. You know, the probe did actually find the SCV, so I think, yeah, Lancer X was expecting that something crazy might be coming down. And he's gonna get the SCV before any scouting happens. That's actually really good. He doesn't even see that the core is spinning, so... Uh, Terran has no idea if, you know, there might be a super fast robo or some kind of DT rush. Yeah. I mean, uh, in, in reality, if you're going for a wall and an expansion, you can sort of prepare for everything. The only problem is you don't know how many turrets to put, and you usually don't want to put too many because that really slows down the, the next expansion. Oh, a probe has actually tricked its way into the back, though. But the SCV is going to be right there to, to, to greet it. <laughs> oh, unlucky. Unlucky, my friend. You're shooting in the front, not going to do too much. We're in a really nice position on that depot, you know, to see if possible drops come in from that area. Nice. Yeah, that's actually uh, that's actually really good. And Perb's gonna, gonna wander around a bit. He doesn't actually see the command center, because that's actually placed in a sneaky position. But since there's nothing else on the base... Actually, if he doesn't see that command center, he doesn't know that this isn't too fact. Oh, can he get the, <laughs> can he get the probe? Oh, oh, he's gonna see it. Oh, he's gonna see it. Okay, so that's pretty good for Lancer X. Yes. He, he is banking 500, 600 minerals at this point, so... What is he doing? I mean, yeah, like, Lancer X is not making an expansion. Uh-oh, okay. okay, uh -oh, the go. wall's gonna die. Uh-oh. Hello? SCVs, well, hello? Hello, SCVs? I mean, that's annoying, but the tank should still win, right? I mean, 
You can still, yeah, you can still repair it. You can still replace the depot. Oh, oh and he's flying the command center at this point? Ah. This is actually really annoying. Finally, the Nexus is being constructed. I guess this is why Lancer built it so late. He was busy focusing on this. He can't quite get two goons onto the tank, though. This is such a critical time. Holy moly. Okay, second tank, though. That should be the end of this. Yeah. But the depot might die again. <laughs> oh, man. He gets it. The problem is that that actually doesn't supply Bounded because he made the command center. So you'd, you'd, you'd think it's not that bad, you know, to getting a depot, but at that point, it's not really getting him anyth anything. Yeah. Oh, and another Dragoon goes down. Uh, this can get out of hand really fast. I mean, you gotta be really careful, you're still in one gateway. See, if Lancer X had gone for two gateways here, even not 10-15 gate, he probably would have won the game right there. Yeah. Because that was a huge mistake from Bounded to let the depot die. Uh, but since he didn't go two gateways, Bounded is alive and he's gonna get siege mode. So he should be perfectly fine here. And Lancer actually having delayed his uh, his Nexus a little bit is in a bit of a wonky position. But he's actually, he's getting a Citadel already, as well as a Robo. Maybe some sneaky DT drops? It's a little bit fast for a Citadel. Hmm, yeah, definitely. And at the same time with the Robo, it's even like weirder, right? Yep, yeah, but it's an Observatory. I don't know, Observe isn't a DT drop, could definitely be. It's still gonna be kind of like, it's gonna hit relatively late. That is I'm... true, but I mean, a DT drop is a DT drop, dude. Yeah. You never underestimate. <laughs> and the funny thing is, when you actually don't get like early DT dropped, you kind of forget about it for a while. You're thinking, <laughs> oh, okay, so pr probably this is gonna be a standard game. I'm not gonna build more turrets. I'm not going to get the comp set really fast. No, no mines or something. And we see the plus one actually being researched and another command center. So the DT drop can definitely do a lot. The only question is, if this is a DT drop, why is the observer going first? And why I don't, I can't find the Templar archives? That is an excellent question. <laughs> does he, does he just not have the money? I mean, Templar archives is 200, 200, right? Maybe he just can't afford it. I know he's making another, no, look, he made another gateway and he's going for the Stargate. I think this is just straight up uh, two base Arbiter play. Okay. I mean, the thing is though, when you go two base Arbiter, don't you go DTs first anyway? Like, isn't No, that... not really. I mean, it depends a little bit on how you want to play it. If you, I mean, you could do that, but the problem is if you go to DT drop first or even just regular DTs, yeah. you don't have enough money to either make the, uh, the Dragoons at that point. And since he lost a few, I would assume that he was like, okay, like, I gotta skip something to get enough gas for that. Okay, that's fair enough. Huh. Well, no DTs then. Just the Arbiters, as you say. And he's gonna take this back, uh, Miner only, although that's not really gonna help him with uh, with no additional gas. But, you know, if uh, this is one of the situations. Like, normally when you see a uh, two-base Arbiter, you usually see the Stasis first. But in this situation, I think the, the Recall first would be possibly really, really good here because of the uh, fast third command center from the Terran player, that, that might even be why he's doing this. Uh, yeah, but the problem is, for the, the way I see it, is if you do want to go for a recall first, usually you get like one shot, right? Yeah. Because the first recall is the one that has to do a lot of damage. Other way, if you get the recall and it doesn't do a lot of damage, you can straight out die to the counter. So I think that's why most people first get the stasis, because you don't really know when the Terran is actually going to move out. and. Usually as a Protoss, until you get like even four bases, you're not going to have a massive production. So it's really risky, I think, to go first for the recall. Very, very true. Well, Arbor Tribunal is almost done. I guess we shall see here. Um, yeah. And what? Plus one going down for Lancerex, that's interesting. I mean, at this point, I would have, you know, assumed that he wants to save as much money that he can to, you know, get ahead economically or something like that. but. Well, he Wait. does have just enough to start the Arbiter as the Stargate finishes and is now preparing a, uh, a fourth base here at the bottom right. Instead of at the left side, of course, I'd be a little bit too close to the Terran. Still very, very low unit count, but uh, he did see that faster command center, so he knows he's completely safe to do this. We do see the factory explosion now, though, from the uh, from the Terran. Well, not much of an explosion. He's going up to five factories, getting a starport as well, but uh, Lancer should start adding some gateways soon uh, as well. Maybe after... 
building the, the nexus. nexus here. Yeah. Uh, but he definitely, you know, I mean, he's gonna start mining. This 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 third nexus is gonna finish here, and he's gonna have a nice boost of income. We should really uh, really start thinking about getting some infrastructure going. I, I mean, I think that the best, the most important part is that that observer is actually there and it's actually seeing everything. Because if you don't really get that information, then it's really tricky to know when you might expect an attack. But with that ob observer. I think like Xerix will have enough information, although he is like, wait, he is up 20 supply more or less, so relatively kind of even when it comes down to the supply. Yeah, yeah. Um, by the way, one I think a random vulture or something saw this uh, expansion attempt at the bottom right, so Terra knows what's going on even though the Nexus hasn't started yet. Um, I still don't see anything being researched at the Tribunal, although to be fair, the Arbiter takes a while to get energy anyway, so you don't need to research it right away. Um, and looks like we got a vulture at the right side as well. And we've got some anti-arbiter defense though uh, coming up in the back. I, was this? Uh, I mean, he must. Yeah, he must have scanned it. Uh, he's got the commsats now, so he knows what's going on. Yeah. The only thing that I think is kind of a, a little bit tricky is that on this map, since you can't really build in the middle too well, then you usually don't get the turrets. And if you don't get the turrets, you're really relying on either vessels, which he has the tech for but no vessels in sight so far. And that means if the Protoss is actually uh, expecting a move out and is waiting at the exit of the natural from the Terran, you can really bait a few scans and force the push to be really slow. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. I'm, I'm a bit surprised the vessel isn't at least in production right now. I'm also a bit surprised actually that the research hasn't started yet on yeah. any Arbiter spell. It's a bit confusing. I don't know if he just forgot. Um, but should probably start that soon-ish. He's gonna have uh, have two arbiters almost soon. So, <laughs> well, to be fair, uh, speed lots are not done yet either. So, <laughs> wait, what? Yeah, it's it's about it's about to finish, but it's not done yet. So I'm assuming that Lancerix is like playing this for the very like late game. And since he's seeing that there is so much like units in the main, like stock, not doing anything, I'm assuming that Lancerix is. Just going for the extreme late game, just like straight up. Man, this uh, good old no rush twenty game going on right here. And the thing about this though is, you might compare this to like a Fighting Spirit Terran turtling on three base, but this third base isn't nearly as good as the Fighting Spirit third base. It's got no gas. It's got fewer mineral patches. So Terran does need to move out a little bit sooner than he would otherwise yeah. doing this turtle build, right? And there is another problem that's also, I think, even bigger, which is in Fighting Spirit, when you have three bases, the fourth, you can kind of afford to take it relatively safely and fast. On this map, I'm not really so sure that there is a fourth that you can easily take. I mean, there's one that the turn does get, like, by default, if he pushes past the temple. Yeah. But even if you do take that one, like, a recall there, or a recall then to the main, there's, a, like, massive distance to go from one point to another, so... You do want to be moving relatively early so that you force at least some units to get killed, by, so you kill a few units from your opponent. Yeah, that is, uh, that is absolutely true. Oh, but we now have the move out, so let's see uh, Let's see what Bounded thinks about that. Here we go, looks like the Protoss army coming out as well, the Guns are spotted, but this is the thing, the Arbiter spell is not researched yet. He went stasis, but he researched it so late that even though both of his Arbiters almost have energy, this one is, uh, just needs 10 more energy, he actually doesn't have any spells on them yet, which is really funny, although the research for this finishes quite quickly, so it looks like with the delay that he caused there by just poking, he is at least going to have stasis just in time. It looks like Lancer knew better than... Uh, than I did at least, and has actually finished this up upgrade exactly <laughs> when he needed time. it. That's that's actually perfect timing there. I, I don't know if that was intentional, but that's actually really, really good. And Dude, now it's... here we go. Oh. He's gonna have two stasis at least. There is the first. Oh, he's just gonna grab the vessel, but there should be some scans coming out. Where are the scans? There's the first scan. He's only grabs two tanks in the back. Really lackluster stasis usage oh, here. No zealots wrapping around the tanks. That's gonna do massive damage. Oh my god, it doesn't even matter that he barely stasis anything. He cleans up the Terran army. Easy peasy, another scan there to try and maybe rescue these two stasis tanks, but no, gonna have to fully retreat. And actually, there's 3,000, there were 3,000 minerals banked for the Terran at one yeah. point there. It's a bit of a macro fail. Ooh, I mean, 
this really kind of shows a little bit that I think about it. Same kind of like in the last week, he was waiting maybe a little bit too long to at least start to put some pressure. Maybe not actually do a full push. But no vulture harassment, no nothing. You, you let the Protoss get away with a little bit too much, I think. Yeah, I mean, maybe this is why he went for the cheese last game, because to be fair, late game TVP, mid late game TVP is quite a difficult matchup to play, and, uh, you know, just falling a little bit behind, maybe not so confident. But now he's in quite a lot of trouble, down a lot of supply. He's got a command center here at the top right, but no way for him to actually mine from there. And, I mean, Lanterix is going to have to make a pretty big mistake now to lose this game. Oh yeah, and uh, chat is also mentioning there were no mines at all. Like there were no mines oh, laid out. Oh, so... true. Yeah, I mean, dude, if we missed that there were no mines, like I am assuming that Bounded could have like missed it as well, right? Well, because we're casters though, we get to miss everything. It's in the it's so in the drop description. Ah, uh, why do I? Why do I hear turrets shooting? But I don't see. What they're shooting. Alright. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Big attack on the front. Looks like Lancer doesn't want to wait for the Terran to start out. He's just going for it. Gonna stase his three vultures. Seriously, <laughs> not the best stasis I've seen, but it looks like it doesn't even matter. He's walking in. Although it's gonna be difficult to take the back tanks. If that tank sieges up, it could be really annoying because he's run out of Zealotude. He's gonna suicide now. He should just pull back. Lancer gonna yeah. be a little bit impatient. I mean, Lancerix does have the economy to kind of waste a little bit, but he still has to be careful. If he loses too much at some point, and the turn still has a backbone of tanks, that actually will get the turn back into the game. Uh... I mean, it's still like really, really hard because we, we see the Lancerix is already taking like more and more bases. He, although he's not mining from some of them, like... He isn't. I mean, he's sort of maybe a bit tunnel visioning on this attack to try yeah. and end the game because he thinks he's won which i mean to be fair he's sort of pretty, yeah pretty much but although actually you know as you said the supplies are quite close now i this must all be SEVs, right because he just barely has any army he's only got four tanks in the bank lancer needs to just not suicide too much and he should still be fine he might go for a big stasis here he could get three at least all right no he gets the front two and Wait, that's even gonna... worse. You want to get the back ones because if you get the front ones, they actually act as a wall to defend the ones at the back. Yep, you're absolutely right. I, he's get, I think he's just getting a little bit too impatient now. He should just pull back. I mean, to be fair, trading away armies in PVT is generally good for Kratos anyway, even if you're not the most efficient. And he is building uh, some more gateways here at the right side. Although I think he should probably build a nexus there first. And as you said, like his pro, wait, his pro count is not the highest. Yeah, he's got very, very low probe saturation, so... Hmm... It's actually I mean, funny, it's... wait, Terran has 4,000 minerals, are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, that's a stasis. Finally. Hey, good stasis. And I think that might actually be it. Because with that stasis, those tanks kind of run away, although the ones at the back... Oh, okay, about it, just... He's not gonna GG. be... Okay, GG. I mean, Bounded actually was relatively doing well because it was still, in a way, four bases against three since one of the bases for Lancerix was not mining at all. So, hmm. I mean, definitely Lancerix has to be a little bit careful because if, like, if Bounded had a really good position and he would be able to defend that more effectively, at some point, I think that this would go out of control. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, hmm... I think I think Bounded should just cheese again though in game three. I don't. I think he should just forget about all of that and just be like, you know what? It's gonna two fact, two fact all the way. You know, you know what? What cheese he could pull off? I mean, if I'm going to say this and he does it the next week, I'm gonna stop telling him what to do. But one thing that you can do is you do a one factory in base, you know, normally, yeah. and then you make um, you make a dropship. And you load four vultures with mines in the dropship. So you go from oh the front with the attack, and then the vultures drop in the main. Oh my god! Wait, this is the build that uh, Idrid did to Noni in uh, in TSL, wasn't it? The one on Andromeda. Is that the one you were talking about? Uh, well, I I I actually know this build because uh, LRM Game did it against me. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? Wait, Where did, did I? Did, I from? think I might have casted that game even, dude. 
Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Dude, I think I even might know what you're talking about. Oh, my God. All right. Anyway, it's going to be Heartbreak Ridge. Plenty of cheese opportunities. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to game three of this <laughs> series to see whether Bounded is going to take Cat's Paw's advice here. Um, <laughs> or what is going to happen. All right, let's go into the game. All right, let's see.